I've never read something so fast-paced. I stayed up through the night to finish it. This is so sad. I really thought this video was gonna end here. What you got? Someone is going around to every single bookstore and hiding these books. He jumps out the window. I spoke to the manager about this. I'll see Mr. Manager's face. <laughs> the video only ends when I find a five-star read. I got rid of everything on my phone last summer, and that left me with just nothing to do. After I got rid of TikTok, I went over to Instagram, so I had to delete Instagram. After Instagram, I went to Facebook. I mean, it's actually quite a fun time on Facebook seeing blasts from the past, but it feels pretty unnatural to still know what somebody that the last time I saw them was elementary school is now doing with their life. So, uh, deleted that. Then went over to LinkedIn because things got dark and I got desperate and my brain was just searching for anything to mindlessly scroll. And if you can't tell, I found a way to occupy my brain and it really quickly escalated. Chapter 1. This kid is a liar. I didn't grow up reading. And I remember even in first grade, I was lying on my reading log saying that I was reading Magic Treehouse. When I really wasn't, when that started to feel like I could get caught in a lie, I started to <laughs> say that I was reading Latvian books. And that ended up working for a while until she started saying that the books have to be in English. That was elementary school. Can't remember really reading any summer reading. I mean, used spark notes and cliff notes to the nth degree. Some books I read. I mean, I read like Great Gatsby and Catcher in the Rye. Maybe. But other than that, never would I pick up a book for enjoyment. Fast forward, but also flashback from right now to last summer. Nothing on my phone to entertain me. And I did what every single seven-year-old did 15 years ago. I picked up the first installment of Harry Potter. Chapter 2. He's not illiterate. He's just a late bloomer. As a 20... What was I at the time? I was... How old am I? 25. 24. As a 24 year old, I picked up Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Captivated. I don't know how I didn't know about the magic of JK Rowling, and then I just kept going. Not a fast reader, I'm still a slow reader, but who cares? I have to remind myself as I start getting anxiety that I'm reading slow and someone might be looking over my shoulder realizing that, yeah, I'm indeed still on page 23 two minutes later. Anyway, if something isn't captivating me within like 50 to 100 pages. Most of the time, I will just drop it and move on to the next. That being said, Chapter 3, The Books That Prove Reading Doesn't Suck. I have found so many, so many incredible books. Um, the one I wanted to pick up, I actually lent to a friend. But put it here. I better use my strong hand. Put it right here. The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. My mom kept being like, You have to read this. You ha It's so good. I was like, historical fiction? I don't know, mom. This sounds like not my forte. I was reading children's fantasy and you want me to now read about fictional World War II? And thank God I did that book literally by the end of it had me in tears. It was so good. So I read her other one, which I do have. We're going on a trip to Alaska, and before we went, I wanted to read this, The Great Alone, which is about a family brought up to Alaska by their somewhat, actually not somewhat, very questionable father. The family have to learn to survive in what is the last frontier, and I'm so grateful I read this before I went to Alaska, because it just gave me that much more excitement, awareness of my surroundings. In no other way can you get into the mind of a... Fruit Loop? No. Of a loony? No. Crazy person? I guess? Crazy person. As you can with Amy Dunn in this book. This is a bit of a funny thing to admit, but I absolutely devoured this book. I know this is all over TikTok and I just figured I might as well give it a try. Maybe someone recommended it. I can't even remember. But this was my first experience with smut. Um, I mean, I was all for it. It was so exciting. I couldn't wait to turn the next page like making sure no one's looking over my shoulder as I'm reading. Well, if you've read this, you know. This? I don't even know how you could write something like this. With the accuracy, sci-fi, guy stranded on Mars, insane book. With this next book, I've never read something so fast-paced. I picked it up at night and I stayed up through the night to finish it. Never in my life have I done that. Never in my life did I think I could do that. But this book is just like, oh, you could eat it up. And that is... Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Sorry if you see hairs flying around. I share this room with my rabbit and he sheds a lot. Anyway, 
this book, absolute insanity. A lot of the sentences are like two words and it's first person present tense. So it's like, he jumps out the window, he runs to the blah, 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 blah. Once you get 20 pages in, the action doesn't stop. There's not a break, there's not a breath. You literally just cannot put it down because you have to know it's coming. And Blake Crouch, the author of this book, has this gift of being able to just constantly keep you on the edge of your seat until you finish the book. And then you take a deep breath and you're like, <gasps> holy shit. Five stars. He's not a one hit wonder. Recursion by Blake Crouch could not put this thing down. Not deep characters, but you don't need it with this sort of a book. That was a lot of yapping. Chapter four finally getting to the point of this video. I've seen other creators do this, actually only one other creator. Haley Pham made a video called I Keep Reading Until I Find a Five Star Read or something along those lines. I was gonna do that by default. That's kind of always what I'm doing. I'm always reading to find the next five star. These are the criteria that I usually reference to determine what star value a book is. To begin this journey, I'm going to be diving into the most popular author this year by a landslide. This author has sold so many more books than the second place author. That is Sarah J. Mass, the author of my intro to Fairy Smut. <laughs> I read the first two, A Court of Thorns and Roses and A Court of Mist and Fury. I did rate both of these a five star. So I was shocked when I came to the third book of the series, A Court of Wings and Ruin. That's where I stopped. I mean, it's still good, but as of now, it wasn't really giving me the five-star feels. So, her other series is insanely popular, and that is Sarah J. Mass's Throne of Glass series. I know that the author wrote this when she was 16 years old. At 16, I would have wrote Twilight. Ooh. No offense, never read it. Online, there's a big discussion, disagreement regarding what order to read these books. I am indeed going to be starting with the prequel. I also think that there's a higher likelihood that this could be a five-star read just because Sarah J. Mass wrote it when she was 18 years old. Maybe, I don't know, anything she learned between the age of 16 and 18 will be reflected in here, and that might increase the chances of this being a five-star read. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started reading the Assassin's Blade to see if this is indeed a five-star read. Hello. Again, I am now a little bit over halfway through the prequel to the Throne of Glass series, and it's good. It's comprised of five separate novellas. 
that all are their own standalone story. It is chronological, but the main character, Selena, 16-year-old assassin, is in different parts of the world with a different group of characters for each of the five separate novellas. I'm going to preface this by reminding you that the author was 18 when she wrote this. That reason alone makes this book incredibly impressive. But if I didn't know anything about the author and I didn't have that bias going into how I would rate this book, it's not a five-star book. And that is primarily because the author does a lot of telling instead of showing. And one of the key factors that I've seen in all of the books that I've rated five stars is that the author does a phenomenal job of showing instead of telling. So instead of telling you that the character was frightened or scared or sad and just putting that on the page, those exact words, the author instead put them in a situation where you can start to feel for the character and just recognize through maybe nuanced behavior or anything like that, that the character is indeed sad. And when an author does that, you start to feel for the characters. You feel like you know them. Unfortunately, in this novel or set of novellas, the author doesn't do that a lot. It's especially bothering me that the narrator is constantly telling me, point blank period, on the page it says like, she is so fearless, she's the craziest assassin. When she is in a fight, or when there is conflict, and it's a moment where, oh my god, okay, now we're gonna see why this 16 year old is such a ruthless assassin. She seems almost incapable. She goes into a fight and like, twists her ankle and falls and runs away. Like, it, does every assassin in this kingdom suck and that just put her on top by default? I'm not getting the vibe that there's an underlying plot about her incapability or insecurity as the world's greatest assassin. Anyway, that's a lot of blabbing. I'm gonna go finish this book. It's obviously not a five-star read, but let's see what it ends up being. And then we'll move on to the next novel, which I'm actually so excited about. Let me just get through this. I really thought this video was gonna end here. After reading Assassin's Blade, I went to Blake Crouch's third book. Both of the other books that I've read by Blake Crouch, both Dark Matter and Recursion, were without a doubt five-star reads. Dark Matter, Recursion, and Upgrade take on these really ambitious scientific topics. Dark Matter explores quantum physics. Recursion takes on what is memory. Upgrade was taking on gene editing. His prose, for some reason, just hits different. And it's nothing complex. Sometimes it's just talking about the way that it feels to be in a city and open up the window during the fall. The premise of Upgrade deals with the futuristic world where gene editing is on the rise. Just think about what would happen if everyone was able to really easily edit genes and use the black market. Chaos. Our main character, Logan Ramsey, is a part of the Gene Protection Agency, which tries to find all of the criminal gene editing that's happening in the world. Things go awry when during one of his missions, Logan is caught in a blast that leaves him feeling ill for quite a long time and then eventually makes him start to feel superhuman. What was in that blast? Why is Logan feeling smarter and stronger? Was this all premeditated? Is the blast related to Logan's demons in his past? You'll have to read Upgrade to find out. Although I want to rate Upgrade a 5-star read as well, I felt like a lot of the plot was not wrapped up as nicely as it could have been. It did end up being a 4-star read. For my next book, I'm going to be reading a book that one of my favorite authors, J.K. Rowling, has claimed to be one of her favorite books, and that is The Song of Achilles. 
I actually already started reading this. I got it on Kindle after I read Upgrade. That doesn't mean I'm not going to get a physical copy. And so far, it's good. It took me a while to get into it, but that doesn't mean that it's not a five-star read. At this current point in time, I am hooked on the plot, and I am very curious what's going to come of it. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and get the physical copy of Song of Achilles, and let's get cracking. so weird. I went in there and I tried to find Song of Achilles and it said they had it in stock. Eight copies. I went over to Fiction, looked, last name, Miller, not there. Am I crazy? I don't know. Go to the front desk. She confirms eight copies, Fiction, Miller. I go back, still not there. Go back to the front desk. Somebody comes with me. They can't find it. I think that every single copy of that book was taken out today. And even the people at the front desk were shocked. They have no idea where the books went. So instead of walking out empty handed, I got copies of two of my favorite books because I don't have them in hardcover and I have a book collection problem. So look how pretty they are though. I saw that Target has Song of Achilles. So unfortunately we're going to be going to full price books to go get Song of Achilles in paperback, despite me already having it on Kindle. Because again, I'm a collector. About this. She said that it's possible that someone must have painted it somewhere in the store. Oh, good. But... You know, it's so weird. I was just at Half Price Books and they had eight copies. Yeah. And they were also missing. Oh, really? Both Half Price Books and this Target have a missing stock of this book. Employees said they just cannot find the books, but they see that they're in stock. I think someone is going around to every single bookstore and hiding these books. I mean, how else is this happening? enjoying the story through Kindle and audiobooks, but I'm just craving to have a physical copy in my hand. I refuse to lose this battle. I finally got it. When I first picked up this book, I had no idea what it was going to be about. I mean, obviously, I was assuming Greek mythology, but really don't know much besides the basics of, like, Zeus and Poseidon and... I almost said Cleopatra. I think it is a retelling of the Iliad. I mean, if you can't tell, there's no chance that I've read the Iliad. So I didn't know anything going into this. I thought the pacing was really quick. I didn't understand that we were actually gonna be spending a whole chunk of time. So things felt really fast. I couldn't really keep up. I would have to reread things and make sure that I was digesting the author's prose correctly. And then once I got the hang of it, and once I started understanding where the story was going, I could not put this down. I fell in love with the characters, and I cared about them, and I cared for their relationships with one another. I don't want to say too much, because I don't want to spoil anything in this. My experience going into this not knowing anything about the premise of this plot was very enjoyable, and so I don't want to take that away from anyone, the like 10 people that are watching this. I know that these next pages are about to be an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> 